What's up, everybody? Celtics character here, back with our video. Get those tens and twenty views to help grow the YouTube and or Rumble channel. Subscribe to both. Why not? Doesn't hurt you. It only helps me. But like I said, do the things. Bolin, do the thing. What thing? The thing! I never had to tell Julie what thing. I'm not Julie, okay? Pretend I don't know anything about anything that's happening here. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you need to like me, subscribe. It helps. If you want your friends to see this, share it with them. But we're going to do a video I, mean, I kind of wanted to do for a while. Forgot about it. Had other videos I had to do, like... This month's suggestion for anime, which is Rocket Power. But is 10 wild examples of Pokemon Sensha by the YouTube channel Hops and Hips Hop. Never heard of the dude. He does have a sponsor of the video and I will skip it. You get sponsors. I don't. I don't care if you copyright claim the video. I'm not get extra sponsorships. For being a series primarily aimed towards kids, Pokemon has probably seen more than its fair share of censorship over the years, if you can believe it. That's because Japan has actually less censorship than the United States does. While meant for, generally, a younger audience, Pokemon being of Japanese origin results in some wild stuff being included in the games, anime, and more due to the di I never remember that in any of the games. ...difference of culture between Japan and its Western audience. What passes as acceptable there doesn't always fly here, and as such, sometimes has to be censored. That is going to be the subject of today's video as we look at 10 especially wild examples of Pokemon censorship. What will not be censored in this video, though, is my unbridled love of today's sponsor. Yeah, well, you know, your video won't be, but my video will be censored. Let's see if I can find where he jumps back and actually stops talking about a wallet. Looks to be about here. Believe it or not, the Pokemon anime had to be censored before the first episode could even begin. In the original opening for the anime, it naturally had its own opening theme song in Japan, just as every Japanese anime does. In one shot of the intro, we see the camera zoom past Charizard, Venusaur, and Blastoise before ultimately showing Pikachu running past Ash and an unidentified girl. Well, the original Japanese theme song during this part of the intro has a few lines that translate roughly as... Alright, if you want to see the censorship that we have, that vastly compared to this, remember, kids show. Through fire, through water, through grass, through forests, through earth, through clouds, through that girl's skirt as Pikachu is seen running between the legs of this girl, and you can even briefly see her pushing down her skirt as well. Interestingly, this clip was unedited in the English version, probably because it was pretty brief, although this lyric about the girl's skirt was naturally taken out. This mysterious girl didn't stop there though, as another character heavily resembling her was involved in another censored moment as well. No, I can't think of this one. In the Japanese version of this Grimer TCG card, which came from the Team Rocket expansion, we see Grimer popping its head out from under a manhole cover and looking up under the skirt of a girl that is walking by. Just remember, Grimer's vault form is muck. Spell muck backwards. You might be trying to evolve. Now, as I mentioned, it's curious that this girl in the card is wearing an outfit that heavily resembles that of the girl from the anime opening. In the Western release of this card, however, Grimer's eyes were made to be a little less suggestive and were shifted to be looking straight forward instead. 
Shockingly enough, yet another part of the anime's original intro was not only censored, but temporarily banned in the US. Dun dun dun. Any guesses? I can't. In the intro, including in the western version, we briefly see a giant tentacruel lunge one of its tentacles. What's that one thing? Like, real name is Pokemon. It's like Japanese launch, Japanese porn star. ...into a building, completely destroying it. This is a clip from the episode, Tentacool and Tentacruel, where we see the aforementioned Tentacruel and a legion of Tentacool essentially destroy a city. While this episode did air without incident when it first premiered, it was temporarily taken off the air following the 9-11 terrorist attacks, as Kids WB, who broadcasted Pokemon episodes at the time, refused to show it, understandably to avoid being insensitive. Eh, it's a, more like a Godzilla movie than a terrorist attack. In the years that followed, however, it was slowly reintroduced both on TV as well as on home video and streaming services. One very interesting edit that was made to the anime when brought over to English concerned the episode The Kangaskhan Kid. The episode, as you may- I do not remember this episode, and I watched the original Pokemon. A few times. No, is all about a boy who had been lost by his parents and had been raised in the wild by Kangaskhan. Tarzan, Pokemon style. They also did um, the Poseidon Adventures. It That's the movie where the giant cruise ship tips upside down and they have to make their way out of it. In the English version, upon the gang meeting this boy, he asks Misty if she's a person or a Pokemon, to which she gets angry and hits him. However, in the Japanese version of this scene, Misty gets angry at the boy because he actually asked if he could nurse on her breasts. Trying to keep it PG, but we can read what it says. And even includes a shot that zooms in on them, which was also cut from the dub. I think this is a classic example of you never really can know what to expect from Japanese anime, even if it is directed towards kids. We've talked a lot about the anime so far, but there are some examples of censorship in the games as well. I might not know these because... I only play the Pokemon Game Boy game. For instance, in Pokemon Stadium... Oh, by the way, that's, he's not wearing clothes. That's just how he's looked. He evolves and wear, puts on pants and a belt. Every Pokemon has an entrance animation upon being released into battle. This includes Nidoqueen, who... Well, does this. Nitto Queen has always been kind of flamboyant in this regard in terms of her design, so naturally the animators were just using what she was given, but... No comment. That naturally wasn't going to cut it for Western audiences, as in the Western release of the game, this animation was changed to Nitto Queen simply shaking her body in an intimidating manner. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Look what I got to, a shivy shake, yeah, yeah. Instead. In the main series games, several changes have been seen over the years as well. Oh, I know there's like multiple references to like bestiality in the games. Many of which have to do with various in-game sprites. Specifically, the in-battle sprite of the Sailor Trainer The what? They're NPCs, jackass. Class in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald was changed from its Japanese appearance to its international one. Okay, I'm not really seeing that much of a difference. The Japanese version seems pretty harmless, which could make this change puzzling, but it was made due to the sailor's pose resembling the Iberian slap. And Offensive gesture that essentially equates to giving someone the finger. Ah, ah. Finger. Other changes have been seen to other. Yeah, it looks like he's more or less like trying to flex his muscle, but. Trainer classes as well, including the beauty from gold and silver being given less revealing clothing in the international releases. Oh, dear God, that little bit of pixelized, like. 
My innocent mind has been destroyed. The sage from Heart Gold and Soul Silver having his prayer beads removed from the Korean release of the game. The okay, that one makes slightly sense, uh, sense if it's in the Korea. The hex maniac from the Hoenn games being given pupils while originally having eyes that appeared pupilless. Don't see an issue there. The medium from the Generation 2 games also having her prayer beads removed for the international release of the games and more. All of the her prayer beads could be mistaken for other types of beads. Just saying. These things seem like small and mostly unnecessary changes, but it's just part of the challenge in making sure Pokemon is able to appeal to a global audience properly. Oh no. Ads. Okay, ads are gone. Speaking of trainer classes from the Gen 2 games, one of them that was newly introduced at that time was the Fire Breather. In the original Gold, Silver, and Crystal, there is a Fire Breather that can be battled at the Burned Tower, whose name is Dick. And, well, yeah, that's a pretty the Burned Tower, whose name is... Fire Breather Dick. Okay. Dick. And, well, yeah, that's a pretty clear red flag, especially when coupled with his trainer class, meaning that you're greeted with the phrase, Fire Breather Dick wants to battle upon encountering him. Apparently, like, I'm not gonna make jokes. In the Heart Gold and Soul Silver remakes, his name was understandably changed to Richard. Okay, they didn't really change his name. They just went with the longer version. Which is actually the full length version of the name Dick. What I just said. Back to the anime, I'm sure we're all well aware by now how ridiculous some of the anime's localization edits can be. Well, well, an example of how ridiculous they can be sometimes comes from a very classic episode of the anime, The Ghost of Maiden's Peak. It it's actually a really good episode. I In the episode, we see Brock and James fall under the spell of the ghostly maiden seen in the episode, and in response, a local old woman gives the group what are supposed to be some ofuda in order to protect them, which are religious items in Japanese culture used for much the same purpose as they are in the episode. They like crosses and garlic on vampires, like in our in the Western Hemisphere and are often made out of paper, also like we see in the episode. However, the problem is that in the English dub, these Ofuda are referred to as anti-ghost stickers, which is a comically insulting replacement. Yeah, yeah, not a good way, not a good look there. I get that kids outside of Japan wouldn't have any idea what an Ofuda is. Get your edit can be the Ofuda. They're good luck charms to ward away evil spirits. That's all they would have to say. And to you, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So it makes sense to change the description of these things. No, it doesn't. But anti-ghost stickers? Really? Like I said, they could still go on Fuda. I just had someone just pop up and kind of say they're charms to ward off evil spirits. Sadly, though, the earlier episodes of the Pokemon anime dub are riddled with these kinds of changes. One specific type of censorship that transcends both the games and anime is censorship involving Hitler. Yep, believe it or not, there have been several instances over the years where both the games and anime had to be adjusted for international release. Be huh? because they contained something deemed too close to Hitler and or Nazi imagery. One of these examples occurred very recently, in fact, in Pokemon Journeys. In Journey's fourth episode, Settling the Score Bunny, a man seen in the episode has a mustache. Oh God, no, the Charlie Chapman style mustache that Hitler ripped off and destroyed. That very much resembles that of Hitler, and as such was edited out of the dub. Other Hitler censorings include one from an early episode of the anime that was banned altogether, where Meowth dresses up in an outfit, which includes another Hitler-like mustache. That looks more like a full mustache to me, but okay. You know, I'm pretty sure that's only supposed to be, like, Mir. The other guy I had closer to this, that looks like a 
Bridge. In a later episode titled All Things. Okay, yeah, that one you can't argue. Right. Ooh, the guys got hit by a pitch in the baseball game. Oh, Notre Dame won. They're on to the College World Series tournament. And Beautifly, there is a scenario where we see a group of Team Rocket grunts doing a unified salute that closely resembles the infamous Nazi salute and was edited out of the dub as well. As I mentioned before... It, it looks awkward because I kind of like this but yeah i give you points on that one or even the games were not immune to this imagery as reggie Steele's sprite in pokemon diamond and pearl shows it in a pose that once again very much resembles a nazi salute yeah it's kind of like the mma stance but okay and as such this sprite was changed in the non-english european don't like the fact he calls them sprites releases of the game to something less controversial. Next up, before we get to our final example of the video, I actually have a bonus one for you, as I hadn't originally planned to include this, but it's just too good to pass up. In an episode of the Indonesian dub of Pokemon Sun and Moon, Jesse's midriff is censored, which- Yeah, a lot of people don't like seeing any skin. Why is her uh, legs didn't get censored as well? Is honestly a bit too much on its own, but instead of editing her appearance to cover her up, they simply just blurred her stomach out. Yeah, it probably been easier just to, you know, color the undershirt down to the skirt. And the end result, as you can see, is hilarious. It's like they were really concerned that Jesse's belly button was going to poison the minds of children, but they were also like, editing some extra clothes on her is too much work, so we're just going to blur it out instead. We may give some flack to the English dub of Pokemon from time to time, but luckily it doesn't have anything on this. And lastly comes a pretty recent occurrence of censorship from the games, specifically Pokemon Sword and Shield. Just last year, it was announced that the Chinese names of Pangoro, Kofagrigus, Runarigus, Toxel, Nicket, and Thievil were all being changed. No reason was given for the change, but words like death, thief, and even hooligan were removed from the names and replaced with less explicit counterparts, prompting many to conclude that this was censorship being put in place to comply with China's very strict rules. It's China. They kind of suck. A lot. Especially seen as how Pokemon games have only recently been able to even be in the country at all, beginning with Pokemon Sun and Moon. This and the Pokemon sucks. company would probably like to continue releasing games there moving forward, which makes the censorship make a lot of sense, even if it is pretty ridiculous to us. No, it doesn't. We have it. Those were some wild examples of Pokemon censorship. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe if you're new, and if you'd like to support the channel further, which makes a huge difference, you can do so by listening to my po- Yeah, I just turned that off. Yeah, no, no. ...here on YouTube, which is massively appreciated. With that said, I will see you all soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, and I will smell you guys later. That was an extreme 90s style exit there, buddy. Gotta say that. Not a bad video. I thought he would go more in depth on, like, episodes just being completely deleted, things getting removed. Like, I think one episode, James had boobs. But not a terrible video. Some of the censorship I get, some of the censorship I don't. China sucks. Uh, he does have a part two, so if this gets... Six likes. I'll do part two next week. But until then, I will see you weird people later.